Hello guys, it's Entity back over here with another episode of Hacking for Noobs. So, today we are going to learn how to install Kali Linux onto our USB sticks, as in Kali Live. It's my favorite installation, as is the easiest one, okay? So, first what we need to do is we need to go into Google, and we need to type in download Kali Linux. And then you go into Kali.org, and just wait for that to load up. Always make sure to get your Kali distribution from Kali itself, as it's for free, you don't need to torrent any cheeky stuff, you know, this is the safest place. So, over here, we need the second option, live, that is for the USB. So, you just click on that, and the download will start straight away. I am actually going to cancel this, because I do have Kali already downloaded the newest version of it. And second of what we will need is a software to burn the data onto the actual USB itself. So for that, I strongly recommend Rufus because it allows you to actually add persistence to your USB as well. So your data will be saved as well. So for that one, you just type in download Rufus, rufus.ie. <coughs> and then you just scroll down and download this one. And just give that a second. There we are. It's already downloaded. As you can see, I do. I already had these programs, so there's going to be a couple of name differences, but that's fine. And over here, you just click yes. And Rufus fires up. Now, I just need to plug in my USB stick that I'm going to be using. As per the USB, you need to make sure that it is at least 8 gigabytes. So you know, it can all fit on there. I would strongly recommend something like, you know, 64 gigabytes or 124, you know. Nowadays, USB sticks are so cheap that <clears throat> it doesn't make much of a difference in the price whether you get a bigger one or not. And also, I would strongly, strongly recommend having a USB 3.0. Um, you can actually see this opened up over here for me. I already have Kali installed on here, but I will reinstall it just to show you guys. But as I was saying, I would strongly recommend USB 3 as it does have a data transfer speeds of up to one gigabyte as opposed to 2.0, which I believe is 500 megabytes, 512 megabytes, something like that. But yeah, basically it's, it's pretty much double the speed of USB 2 and, you know, it will speed up your system when you're using it as well. So... You can see I only got one USB stick plugged in. I would recommend, of course, your keyboard, etc. you can keep plugged in. But if you got a USB stick plugged in that may have data on it, I would strongly recommend to unplug those for a little while just to make sure you choose the right one. So we got our USB stick selected. Now we need to select the disk or ISO image. That is the one we just downloaded from Kali.org. <clears throat> So you go on to, well, this would be in your downloads folder or wherever you put it. And as you can see, I got both of them. It's the Kali Live one. So you just click open and it's easy as that. So if you, as we have spoken in the previous episode about the difference between, you know, persistence or non-persistence. Now, if you want to add persistence to it, it's as easy as sliding the slider. I would recommend going for the biggest one, you know. The, that way we get the most storage space on our actual system as well once it's installed if you don't want persistence and you know you want to be cheeky cheeky be able to unplug your usb and everything be gone from it then just keep the slider at zero and it will be all fine and that's it you just press start you will get a couple of warnings coming up saying all of the data will be erased and also if you have had partitions on this previously it will also come up yeah all the data on this device will be destroyed. And also the partitions, because I already had it installed and it had different partitions, you just click OK, OK, and it's absolutely fine. And at this point, I believe that should be the last pop-up. Sometimes it might automatically open up your USB during the installation. At that point, just cross off the window and <clears throat> you're good to go. Now, this is going to take a little while, so I will get back to you guys once it's completed. Okay, so as you can see, it has automatically opened up that folder. Just close it up and then wait until it finishes of copying all the files onto the thing. And there we are. As you can see, it has all finished. So what you need to do now is just close it, just exit out of the page. 
Now, one quick important tip. Let me just have a look. So, you can actually open up the USB itself, but do not, don't, okay? Do not click on setup.exe. I have done that before many years ago and I had to reinstall my whole system because it messed with the grub files. But anyways, what we're gonna do next is we're just going to shut down our computer and I'll see you in a sec. Anyways, our computer is finally fully shut off. So what we're gonna do here is just turn the computer on. And for me, it's F2. It's usually F2 nowadays. However, it could be different. I do have a password set on my BIOS. Usually you guys wouldn't have this unless you do, I mean, but then you would know your own, own password. So over here, we've got a few tabs. What you need to go on to is the boot section. So in the boot section, so you would usually have it looking like this. All you gotta do is make sure to disable secure boot and change the UEFI to legacy. And yeah, that's fine. I mean, we're staying on this one anyways. So at this point, <clears throat> all you need to do is click F10 for save and exit. As I said, it could be different for your motherboard. All the info is all down here. So at this point, we just click F10 and it will say, save configuration and changes and exit now you just click yes and then your system will start to reboot at this point you start spamming f12 and there you have it over here you have the boot manager come up and you just go for the usb at this point you will hear a beautiful sound oh so depending on how you installed it if you chose um Sorry, if you chose um, just the normal without persistence, so without saving your data, then this would be the one that you clicked on. But as I said, um, I'm an ethical hacker and I don't really have much to hide on there. Whatever I do, I just I just nuke the stuff anyways. I just shred the stuff. So you just click on the corresponding one. You hit enter. And then you see this beautiful, beautiful, magical screen. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. It looks cool as hell. Okay. <laughs> Occasionally, you will get stuff like this. It's fine. It says it's failed, don't believe it. Pay for work, don't worry. <laughs> of course, first time you start this up, it's going to take a little bit longer. But once you started it up for the first time and you have logged in logged in properly, etc., it will it will do it quicker the next time. As I said, the USB mode, well, the USB, we are mainly going to be using it for Wi-Fi hacking. Anything else, as for Maltego, you know, mapping out company structures, etc. We, we will be using the actual Windows version that is on top of the Windows system. So, you know, until now, I was only using this one. And there you have it. You got Kali Linux on your computer. After this, I'm going to be doing the other guys tutorial as well, the other installation types. And after that, we are going to be going through a few um, other methods of how to install it. And once that's done, we are going to be going through the first things that you do need to do once you log into here. Because I mean, just one thing, if you guys do want to start playing around with this straight away. Oh, there's my mouse. Okay. So... Oh, it pops up on my other screen. 
There we are. So let's say um, you are messing around with this and you leave it there for a minute and it comes up with this. There you are. So at this point, all you need to do, your na username will be Kali and your password will be Kali. And there you are, you're back in the system. So yeah, as I said, in the next videos, I'm going to be quickly covering how to install other instances of Kali Linux. And after that, I will show you exactly what to do, how to update your system, how to upgrade your system, general keys. And then we can finally get into Wi-Fi hacking, which I cannot wait for. <laughs> that is the exciting stuff. Anyways, I'll see you guys in a bit and have a good one. Bye.